You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. Welcome along to another Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast with me, David, and, and Tamara Pecinovic Bailey. See, she knows her own name now. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, after 47 years, I learned it. Oh, when you said 47 years, I thought, what? <laughs> we haven't been married that long. Anyway, nevertheless, um, welcome along to the podcast. And you will have seen the title uh, for this week's podcast is 90 in 180. Uh, we've had Whatever lo- that means, but you will find out yeah, if you gonna stay find till out. the end. You're going to find out. Um, we get a lot of questions, and we do actually, through the year, uh, especially from YouTubers, uh, people watch YouTube rather, who say... Um, how easy is it to come and stay in, in BIH in Bosnia and Herzegovina? And we've also had a friend uh, that uh, used to come and visit us, um, and he was also confused by the 90 in 180 day rule, which is. I am also confused by that rule. I'm going to try. I and still don't get it, so please no, try I've, to explain it. Properly. I've tried to explain it to you so many times, and you still <laughs> I don't can, get it. I cannot get it. Okay. Um, and we're going to talk about that and a little bit about um, what you need to get a residency visa for a year uh, here in the country. So let's go back to what the title of the podcast is, 90 in 180 days. When you come to visit Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, you will cross the border. And the first thing that should happen is you should get a stamp in your passport. Don't worry if you don't, because I can tell you without a doubt, your passport will be swiped through. Our computer oh, on, system, and uh, then you will stay in the system. And you're in, the, you're in, you're in the system, and they know exactly when you enter the country <laughs> and who you are. And who you are. Now the rule, <laughs> the rules quite clearly state, um, although not many people do it, to be honest. <clears throat> and I used to be very guilty of this back in the day. But within 24 hours, you should report to the local police station of uh, next to where you're living. Okay. In our case, we live in a village near Laktashi in the north of the country. We go to the police station in Laktashi. So basically what you do, you uh, so when you enter the Bosnian Herzegovina, you go to the first police station that's near where you're staying. And then you register there and you get a white carton. Carton on a white card. White card, white card, yeah. You get a white card and then you have to pay a tax. I think it's a one mark per day or something because you have to pay a tourist task. Uh, uh, tourist tax. Tourist ta- task to stay here. So you're supposed to do that. But however, if you don't do that, you might be okay because they don't check that too much still at the border when you leave the country. That's right. But the rules... but if you get caught by the inspector in Banja Luka or anywhere you go, you might get into trouble. Correct. So this is what happens. You go to the police station. They will give you a white card. All the details that they need are on your passport. It's super easy. It's nothing too complicated. No, nothing difficult at all. And then you stay for your time in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina with that card in your passport. And when you leave the country, um, the border officer will take it out of your passport. Now, you are entitled to be in the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina for 90 days in any 180 days. And this is what, what confuses people. It used to confuse me. I actually got caught out and fined, but that wasn't a problem anymore because I'm an, a, a model citizen, I think. But this is what happens. What you should do if you're going to visit a BIH is Mark on a calendar the day that you are entering the country and then go forward. So if it's in June, go up to the end of the year, uh, 180 days later and make another line in your calendar. Right. That's 180 days. Within that period, you can stay in this country for 90 days. That's 90 days, one after the other, two periods of 45 days or 90 individual one day trips. 90 days in 180 days. And of course, it moves. Okay. And what we what we what, what we used to do before is we think that like you stay ninety days, then you go for two days, you know, somewhere in Graz or Vienna, have a Zagreb, nice weekend yeah. or Zagreb, and then you come back and then you stay another days. But that's not the rule. You have one hundred and eighty days to fill up your ninety days, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So you that's your tourist vi- visa. It's called a tourist visa. Apart from a very small handful of countries, you don't have to pay for the visa, and you get it via that stamp when you enter. The country. Now, you can also stay, as far as I'm led to believe, for six months. But in that case, you need, before your 90 days is over, to go to 
the local uh, foreigner's office, which is part of the BIH border service, and they will sort you out. But I do know that once you've had six months, you ain't going to get another one and you'll have to leave the country uh, for six months. Now, if you want to stay long term, you want to come and live here. If you find a nice girl or boy or boy <laughs> you want to marry yeah. and things, you have to have some you need papers to... ready to apply for your long term stay. Yeah. And these are, this is called a D residence visa. Um, they are issued for one year uh, only. You can reapply for five times. That's five years consecutive. And then on the sixth year, you can apply for either permanent residence here or citizenship. or citizenship. We will not talk about permanent residence or citizenship or anything else in this podcast um, like that. Yeah. Now, there are three uh, areas that I know of, two that, sorry, I know of one that I think works where you can apply for a visa to stay here long term. One is by being married to a citizen of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The second is proving that you are in a long term relationship. Now, I don't know what the, the officials require to prove that. Uh, you call it a French marriage, right? <coughs> French marriage. Yeah. Uh, I think the old word in English was a common law. Yeah, common, common, law. common law marriage. And the third... By the law, that's, a, uh, that's acceptable here. Yeah. Um, and common th- law people have the same, same, same rights as the married people. And the third, which I think works, is uh, if you have... Uh, bought property. You you own property in BIH, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But you need to check that out. So what we're going to talk you through now, if you think about coming here, you need basically to be married to somebody or a long-term relationship. Yes. Um, I've gone through this. Um, so there are things that you do on year one and different things to do on years two, three, four and five. A little bit easier on other years. Okay. First things to think about is... Um, uh, you need to go to the foreigner's office uh, in the town or the municipality where you are that is run by the um, border service, immigration service or the border service, and tell them that you want to apply for a residence visa. Now, Tamara has helped me out. We've got the piece of paper from all those years ago, from that first uh, application, uh, and what you will require to get. You can do this. We did our first one in a week. Yeah. And our subsequent ones, it only took us three days. So the first thing that the border officer... No, no, the first one took more than a week. Did it? Yeah, How much? around 10 days. About 10 days. Because okay. we had a problem with the health insurance. Right. At the bottom of, just to let you know, at this stage uh, of chatting to Tam, what number is at the bottom of your number 17, right? 17. There's a 17 pieces of paper. You're going to need paper. 17 pieces of paper. Um, for the first time, for the first for the second and all the other times, it's That's right. 14. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is? To apply. So you go to they the border. Have, you, you go there, they, they have a, a application, and you need to pay administrative tax, which is 150 marks. Which is 75 euros, about 75 pounds. Right. Once you've applied, you will get given a piece of paper by the border officer, by the immigration officer, sorry, that says that you have applied, and you have to complete your application within one month. Yeah. 30 calendar days. All right. So it's not like I've applied, I can take my time. You've got one month to get all this stuff together. Okay. Number two. Okay. Uh, number three. That was number three. Three. You need a photograph, two photographs for the first time and one photograph for every other time. Basically for passport photos. Passport photographs. Yes. Uh, then you need a verified photocopy of your passport, and the passport needs to be valid three months. Bef- uh, it needs to be at least three months after the period you're applying for. Okay, so if you're applying for a year, you need to have 15 months valid on your passport. Yes. Also, when you take your passport, you photocopy it, you must take it to a notary. Here it's called an advocate, and they will then put the stamp on it, on your photocopy, to say that it is legal. This does not come free. You have to pay for this. Yes. We'll talk about the final fees at the end. But it's not budget breaking. We'll talk it. We'll talk. You, we'll tell you what the final fee is at the end. Next okay. One. And then you need a um, photocopy of that white card that you get uh, when you go and register yourself in a police station. So that first card, which first you've got, card you get, which is still valid. Ha ha. Yes. Um, you need that as well. Because if it's only not, for the first time. Yeah. Because if it's not valid, then you're going to be in the country illegally and you could get fined which I did. 
we can tell you about that in another story, in another podcast. Yes, Next time. and we are talking here about long-term stay for yes. over f- five years. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, and then the number six is... Uh, uh, oh, okay, that, that's what it is. Uh, name my number six. Number six is uh, for the first time now. Yeah. Uh, uh, you need to have a proof that you have a place where to live and stay. So, yeah, so you need so that. So explain that. So, for me... Uh, knowing Tam, where Tam lives, the property at the moment is in her parents' name, not in her My name. My dad's name, actually. So we needed to get a piece of paper from her dad saying that you can stay here yes. and that it is his property. Okay, once again, you can you can write it and that person can the sign it. The only thing is that you, you write it, the person sign it, agrees to it, and you have to go and verify it in the municipality. 30, and that comes with And that person needs to come with you with their ID number. Yeah. So you need to get that, and that has to be verified. Which, yes, which, and then in the in the center where you get a paper from the you need you need to prove that that house belongs to him. So you go, what's the name of that land, place? Catasta, like Catasta. You go to the land registry. Land registry to get that piece of paper. Right next. Uh, next. Then you need a health checkup. Uh, you need a health checkup that you are healthy, and then you need some diseases like syphilis and some aids and everything else aids and like that you will be told by your immigration officer there are about 10 different places where you can get it in banya luka they will tell you exactly where and if you but if you apply in in sarajevo mostar zenitsa wherever they will have their own number of um let's say authorized and certified medical centers or medical practices where you go um they don't then you, you have to pay for them um they're yeah. about 100 to 150 marks yeah and they're you know, it's just, 50 euros about. Yes, yeah, just the way it is. It's I, I did mine. There was nothing difficult. No, nothing harsh or hard at all. Yeah. And then for the first time, you need uh, to get a piece of paper from your country of birth that you have don't have any criminal record. For me, being a Brit, I had to send back to um, for a criminal record check. Um, that, that was done within uh, just a few days. And they sent me an e-copy of that, uh, and my immigration officer accepted that. In subsequent years, though, you go to the MUP, to the Ministry of Interior, uh, who run the police here, uh, and they do a criminal record check on you. And we also have to go to the court. Yes, and this needs to be translated into local language. Yeah, so we everything that you have that's in English... But official translation. It cannot be just a normal translation from somebody else. It needs to be official translation. And, and, and you'll find those everywhere in BIH. Uh, find, uh, what do they call it? Sutski, Sutski Tumats. Tumats. Yeah. Uh, and you go there and they do all the documents for you and you pay. How much do we Children pay? up to 14 years old don't need this criminal record check. Okay, because they're innocent. If you're bringing your children. How, how much did our tra- translator cost per document, the one that we use in Banja Luka? The one in Banja Luka, 20 marks. That's £10. Yeah. But that was for quite a, quite a, few, do- quite a few pages, wasn't it? No, just one document. Was that was it? Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's a 20 marks per page. So we've been to the police um, in England or where, your home country. You've got a criminal record check. For subsequent years, you're going to have to go to the MUP, to the Ministry of the Interior to get that. And for second and f- uh, further years, you go to the so court. So further down, you go into this country to get the criminal record check. You don't have to order it from your own, own country, country of no. birth. Yeah. Okay, after that. So we do- we've done the police. We've done the court. Then you need a proof of marriage. Yeah, that's a marriage certificate. That's, that's done in municipality. I don't know what it, I don't know if it, uh, how much, what it costs to get an international one or anything if you're if you're outside the country coming in. But for us, we married here, so it was a breeze. And to give you a tip, everything was much cheaper to do it in Laktashi than in Banja Luka. So we did everything in Banja Luka in Laktashi, and uh, they are all connected, all the offices. So all these papers that you need. Now we're going to talk yeah. about them. You d- do it in the municipality, and uh, they are cheaper in a smaller obstina. Yeah. Okay. So next. Okay, then you need to prove that your uh, spouse is a citizen of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah, what did you done in municipality? What did you have to prove? Just with your birth certificate and no, they have it there in the yeah. books. Oh, you well, just have to and uh, ask what you need. Didn't I need a birth certificate as well? No, that no. was for the marriage. Oh yeah, not for this. Yeah, the birth certificate for the marriage is a bit of a pain. Okay, go on. Okay, and then uh, you need to go to Tips, which is um, MUP which is a police station uh, where you live to get your, um, 
where, where are you staying? But your spouse. Your spouse. Your spouse. So you had to go to SIPS. So I have to go there. And the uh, last few years, that thing is free now. But it used to be charged 10 marks. So now this paper of criminal record and this is free. No, the paper of criminal record in municipality is 10 marks Shh. now. But the, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Sorry about that. And next. Then you need Kuchna Lista, which is like a piece of paper telling how many people live in that household where you where you're where you're gonna stay where you're gonna stay. Once again, that has to be verified. Uh, the, in municipality, cheaper in Laktashi <laughs> than in Banyaluka. And then you need um, proof that you are. Uh huh. With proof that you can support yourself or that your spouse can support you. So anything that can prove that you have money to live here while while you're applying for this so for me, residency. So for me, I'm 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 uh, I'm retired from the UK, so I have a pension. Uh, for me, being from the UK, I applied to the Department of Works and Pensions back in the UK, and they sent me a copy uh, of a, a, pro a projection of my um, monthly payments on my uh, pension, and I gave that to the immigration officer, and he accepted that. I do believe as well that if you can't get hold of that. Um, if you have a bank statement that clearly shows that you're getting pay, paid a salary or paid a pension or whatever, then they accept that as well. Okay, then you need the proof that you have a health insurance, which for the first time you should get it from um, like a private company and you pay only for one year. And that's, we don't know how much that now is, but it's about maybe three to three to 500 marks. So you need to have that for one year and you also need to prove that your spouse has a health insurance. So for me, uh, we took a we got a health insurance to start off with. Um, Tamara is covered by the state health care service here, but because we were married in the second year and subsequent years to that, uh, what had happened is uh, uh, I, David pays for his insurance. I, I pay twelve percent yeah. from her pension, so he's considered as a inno pensioner. So he pays every month and he gets total care. So I pay twelve percent of my pension into the state. Um, state healthcare system here, which I don't begrudge for a number of reasons. One, I haven't been here all my life and paying into it like everybody else, everybody yeah, other citizen. True. So I'm paying later. I get full coverage. Um, and also, uh, as a pensioner, I don't have um, prescription charges or anything like that. So a lot of the stuff I get here is free, which I would never get back in the UK anyway. Yeah, um, I have to pay small fees for yeah. everything. And so today I have a little blue book which is my uh, health book. So when I go to the doc doctors or I go to the um, emergency room or whatever, I have a number and I have details. And it also shows that I am paid up. Yes. So, so every time I pay for it. In the future, I may not have to do that. But at the moment, I do. I don't. I have a plastic card now. It's a new new yeah, project that all, they all, have. All, all digitized. So like in Canada, we have a, like <clears throat> health plastic cards. And that's about it. So if you want to talk about the costs now, that all depends, but uh, only on, on for the, the papers. Time, on the first time, it was 150 for the application. 150 for application. First time, uh, 300 uh, marks for the health insurance you paid. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I lost account for how many translations we needed. We didn't. So know. we didn't count that. But overall, without translations, without the health insurance, uh, you need about from 250 to 300 marks. That, Not I, minus health insurance yeah. and translations. Yeah, I can actually say that two, two to 300 marks is for years two to two and onwards. Uh, you need to do five years uh, before you can apply for your permanent residency or yeah. citizenship. <laughs> but I think the first year is quite, quite pricey. Yes. But you have to weigh that off. <coughs> you have to weigh off the fact that you're wanting to come and stay in the country. Um, they do have law. Um, they do not want to have, you know, bad people, if you will, criminals or unhealthy people in uh, because it will uh, drain on their already stretched uh, um, systems that they have. So I don't begrudge that. I think on the first... And don't worry, even if you have to pay, it's not bank breaking. It's not, it's, it's it's not budget breaking. It's very affordable. It, it is. And, you know, <clears throat> we always laugh between ourselves. Um, the immigration officer that I had um, after the first year, you, you sort of like build up a relationship. They're not corrupt. They don't, they're not going to do things for free. 
that you they know just follow the law. Yeah, they follow the law, and when you come in, there's a smile on the face. They know you, and all the rest. Of it. Oh, one of the other things that happens during this process, you will get visited by the police. Yes, they come along as part of the check. So don't freak out. Yeah, you shouldn't freak out when the police say it's so and so living here, um, because part of the immigration acceptance system is that they need to see you at your place of residence. Yeah, and that where you so, said that you're gonna yeah. live. So we had everything we had, is okay. We had a laugh one time because the police came up and I'd already got my um, residency sticker for the year at that time in my passport and said no 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 it's not. I said no 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 it's not you. We're looking for these two other Brits that live in the village. Which we don't know them. I mean, come on, this, this isn't a huge place, but we couldn't find them. So that's it. I hope that um, we've given you a view and answered questions that you might have about 90 in 180 days. Please don't abuse it because uh, you will get caught out. Um, the systems here, Bosnia used to be a totally dysfunctional and you know chaotic country. Things e are working out ev now. Every day, every day, it gets more and more um, professional. I had a friend uh, that came to the country and stayed six months. He got told off by the immigration officer. And after that, he used to do 90 days in Bosnia, 90 days in Montenegro, 90 days, 90 days in Macedonia, then go over to Serbia and then come back here. So that's it. If you are thinking of coming and staying long term. If you have any more questions and we can figure it out for you. So you can just send us a message. Or email or, or whatever. Or email or whatever. It's called, it's called Get in contact and we can help you. It's called also, if you want to visit this country, we can help you give you tips and tricks where to go, what to eat and what to do. It's called a, resident D, a residence D visa. Um, but you'll find out more about that if you go to Immigration, Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's raining outside. Um, which is yeah typical for autumn, isn't it? Yes, yesen, 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 yesen. See, I'm learning. God, I'm slow with the language. So that's it from this uh, edition of the podcast. Next podcast, we could be talking pivo and sir. Yes, from where? Beer and cheese from a Trappist monastery. Oh, you should have left it as a secret. Uh, well, they don't know what's coming. It's do they? very popular. It's uh, by the. Uh, the old French tradition of making cheese and beer in Banja Luka. Okay, until the next one, from me and her. Tamara Pecinic Bailey, <laughs> vidima se, dovedzena, goodbye. And how do you say pain in the shoe pack? Pain in the ass. Smarac. 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 Am I smarac? Smarac. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. To find out more about us and where we live, why not check out our blog at anenglishmaninthebalkans.com. See you next time.